Hello everybody. Welcome back to Bison Workshop. I'm Bob. And today we're going to make a new tool holder. Uh, on my lathe, I've been wanting to make an option where I can do some uh, grinding. And uh, I mean not major grinding, but enough to make nicer work. So, uh, I went and started investigating what I could use for a tool post grinder and about six months ago I decided to buy a pencil grinder. Yeah, it's small, but it has says it'll go up to uh, 58 hundred or 58,000 RPM. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, 90 PSI. It's an air grinder. And originally I had thought about, since I had two of these boring bar holders, that I could use it. But the shank on this is 20 millimeters, where the shank on this is bigger. So that was out of the question. So then I decided just make a new one. So I started with this piece of aluminum and I had this made. I just drilled it out for five eighths and then uh, took a, this thing right here and went in it to make it to size 20 millimeters because five eighths is just a little smaller than 20 millimeters. So I milled the slot on there that goes in the tool post and it was sticking out too far. So we're going to stick this back in the mill and uh, take 640 or 650 off of each side. No, 643. We got to take 643 off of each side, and uh, it's about the same the other way. So I've got my mark on there where I want to go to, and the only reason I'm doing this is because it stuck the uh, uh, grinder too close in, and there's only but so much travel. That's the only travel I have as far back as I can get it. So, um, I wanted to try to utilize a little bit more room. So now when this goes in, it's going to be right up next to the, uh, tool holder. And I'll show you that. So basically it's just going to go in there and it's going to be like that right there. So that way I can reach over here, turn my switch if I need to. Of course, it'll be back here. Uh, but this here will be pretty close. So then I can just orient that where I want it. And I'd kind of like to have the end of this sticking out. And I think I need to do a little bit more filing on it. When I drill them holes to put the set screws in, I mushroomed it a little bit, but I'd like to have the whole end of this out so I can use my wrenches to get these off and change them if I need to. So, um, we'll go over to the mill and we're going to mill that out so that this will fit my tool post holder or tool holder. Stay tuned. So now, the way I came up with my measurements was pretty simple. Uh, I measured this, and that gives me about 14 millimeter, about 0.6 or 7 less than a 
14 millimeters. So it's okay if I make that at 13. So that's what we're going to try to shoot for. But basically what I'm going to do is just put it up there and test it as, as I get close. But I just took the width of this, subtracted it from the width of this, and that gave me 6.43 something. So 6.43. So that's what we need to take off. So uh, we're going to put us a set of parallels in here. And these are stainless steel parallels. And no, they're not precision parallels. So all you Nazis out there, go away. Uh, all I'm caring about is getting it machined. So we're going to set that in there. And that's just to get it up higher than the jaws. Because it goes lower than the jaws if I do it this way. So then I'll take me a, another straight edge and go to the side here and put that up against there and tighten it up. That will give me repeat, repeat, repeatability, yeah. if I can say the word. So now I'm just going to tap it down. All right, so now we've got that tight. Now we need to set our bit to the side of this. So we're going to come up and bump that, and that's going to be our center or our uh, zero for X. So all right, so now we're going to drop that bit down. And we're going to come into it. Just until we touch. Alright, so there we go. There's our center for X. Or zero for X. So now we'll move that in. We'll see how deep we want to get. We're going to go in 12 millimeters. And that will stay there forever. So now we need to drop down. I think I'll go out here to the end and do it. So now I'll drop down the top. Now we'll set our Z axis to Z ray. And we want to take it down until it says 643 on the DRA. So now we'll just start taking, I usually take about 50, 50 mil for uh, half a millimeter. But we're going to try. Since I got a sharper bit, we're going to try one millimeter.
All right, now we've got that done. Now we can take her out. So now we get to file those edges down. And I've got a file that doesn't cut on the side. So I can do these little chamfers here without getting into anything. Of course, it don't matter. It's just a tool holder. And then I'll go around and just hit all the corners. Just so it ain't so sharp. Alright, so now we've got it, our piece made. Now I think I should have used a different milling bit. Because this one's a little rough. Should have used my uh, auger bit. When it really does the job. This bad boy right here, I should have used that. But I didn't. I didn't feel like changing the chuck. Alright, so now we're going to take this over to the vise and I'm going to wall that out just a little bit more. Well, don't need to now. Probably because it's swelled up from the heat because it's a little warm. Alright, so we're going to take this over to the uh, uh, blade as soon as we get our set screws in. And I just used quarter 20 set screws, about three eighths inch long. Cause I left myself plenty of meat. So now we'll go ahead and put that in. Well, let's put it in the uh, tool post first. Fits pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and tighten that down. All right. Then we can go ahead and put this in. Now this is the way it's going to set. So I kind of like for having to have my words up. Not that it's going to matter because I'm going to have most of it taken off. Well, all of it. At least I got the uh, on off. So this turns to turn on and off. So I just kind of want to make that straight. All right, so we just got the head, the black part sticking out. Now we'll go ahead and... Now you don't want to tighten these very tight. You just want to get it snug. Because you don't want to crush that tube, your air tube. Otherwise it won't spin. So now let's take it to the lathe. I got to put some uh, Taflon tape on this fitting. I had to change the fitting because the one that they had didn't fit. And um, I only had the males, so I had to use an elbow. So we're going to put, this one's got an actual O-ring on it that was supposed to seal in this, but I don't have a female. So I'm going to put a little Taflon tape on that, seal that up a little bit because it was leaking air. All right, so now we've got over here to the lathe, and we're going to try this out and see how well she works. Now, I'm just going to use this sanding disc just for test purposes. I've already squared my tool post up. So now, we're going to hook up the air. And I'll probably have to re reroute this somehow. Alright, so we've got air. Now we just turn this bad boy.
Look at that. That thing spun so fast it bent that fucking shaft. <laughs> wow. That is some cheap tooling, man. You see this only on Bison Workshop. Wow. It really bent the hell out of it. <laughs> wow. Never would imagine that that would have bent that like that. So these are the wrenches that comes with it, and it comes with another collet, different size. It's smaller than this one. This one's eighth inch. So you just take and spin that until the flat spot ends up there. Wow. Of course, it won't go in very far, so let's get us another tool to put in there. All right, let's try this thing here. It's got a little aluminum on it, but oh well. Well, it don't go in there very far. I wonder why. That thing should go further in there. Is this not for eighth inch? Yeah, I don't get it. It should go in further than that. That's all the further I can get that in there. This is probably not going to work. But... The real main reason that I would like to make this work is so I can use a grinding wheel on it. So if I need to make an O-ring groove or a groove for a clip, I can do that. So let's not spin this too fast this time. <laughs> All right, let's see what this rinky-dink little thing's gonna do. We're gonna put this in the chuck. Just an old scrap piece of metal I had left over from the last job or job before that or something. Now, this actually should be turned. See, this is spinning in that direction down this is also spinning down this should be spinning opposite so I don't like running my chuck backwards because this lathe doesn't have a locking mechanism to lock the chuck to the spindle and it can spin off now I don't think it would do too awful much on the grinding process but just for test purposes just to see if this works we're going to try to uh, shape the edge of that up just to see how well it turns out I need to find a better camera system for you guys man everything's always in the way alright so let's bring that in And let's try it out. Let me try turning this backwards. All right, so now we've got it going backwards. Uh, so let's take and put, turn that in.
terrible. It's just chewing it the hell up. Of course, that's a bad disc, too, so you can't really go by that. So, I'm thinking this can only be used for very, very, very light applications. I mean, extremely light. I mean, this is just an eighth inch shaft. It's got too much stick out. In order to actually fix that, I'd have to shorten this shaft so that not much of it's sticking out, just enough for me to get my wrench on it. But this is kind of a bad disc anyway. Uh, it's a used one. It's got aluminum stuck in it, so it's really not very good. So, um... I would imagine that if I can use a grinding wheel on this and I can get that grinding wheel up close to the chuck, then uh, we should be able to cut grooves. That's mainly what I want to do. I mean, I'd like to be able to do uh, grinding like that, but you got to have expensive stuff. You got to have motors and, you know, uh, you can't, it's just not motors you can just find in any tool or whatever so we know that it works I have to reroute my line here and probably make it so that it's permanently mounted here to the uh, lathe so that all I have to do is plug it in right there you know so that would give me plenty of hose because I only need to go up to the chuck so that's got plenty of hose there that I could just take and drape it down here put me a fitting on there or just mount that to there make something to mount that right there and then that way I can just plug it in right there make sense <laughs> so uh, At least we tried, right? You can't fail if you don't try. And you can't succeed if you don't try. So either way, you got to try. So that way, now from now on, if I ever need this, guess what? I got enough hose to put that right there. It'll be there all the time with all the rest of my tool post. So now eventually I do want to get a bigger, uh, an actual tool post grinder. And this lathe did come with one, but it wasn't for this lathe. So I just, I don't know what happened to it. It probably got left in my other shop when I moved from there, from Winston-Salem to here. So, uh, it either got left or I did it, used it for trading material. I don't know. I would imagine I probably left it. Uh, I left a lot of good stuff in that shop. <laughs> I miss that stuff. Every time I go to try to make something, I got all that stuff I left in that shop I could have used. Anyway, that's my uh, tool post grinder. Temporary one. Lightweight work. I mean, very light. You've seen what it did to this first shaft. <laughs> Look at that shit. Bit that thing worse than a lip dick, I reckon. But uh, I believe that I can stop that from happening just by shortening this shaft to however, however deep it goes into this, shorten it to just a, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch before it bottoms out. That way you got a little space between the collet and the tool. So, um, it sounds good though. It, it ain't got a whole lot of power. Uh, it's actually, let me rephrase that. It's actually got too much power because if it didn't have enough power, it wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I mean, there's some, some Centrifugal force going on there. But, uh, 
these are actually not very good to use on this simply because these things are just glued on there with a, some kind of a epoxy and that stuff gets hot and these things will just fall right off the shafts. So I've had them happen that way. So there's my uh, tool holder for the uh, die grinder or pencil grinder. So we'll just call this video the pencil grinder or tool post pencil grinder. There we go. We'll figure it out. So we'll put that up there for another date. That opens us up for being able to do something different. So if I can just put a grinding wheel on it and make a groove, I'd be happy. Uh, of course, it doesn't really matter. You don't need a grinder when you got a lathe and a, and a cutoff wheel. You can make the grooves, but the actual die grinder is a little thinner. And sometimes it calls for a real thin uh, slot. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Show me some love, guys. Anyway, y'all have a good one. Later.